Well, take your Bibles and let's go to the book of Revelation. That's right before concordance. Does that help? Last book of the Bible. We're starting this morning a new series of messages from the book of Revelation. We're going to go verse by verse. And uh, you know the devil hates the Bible. Do you know that? He hates every book of the Bible. But I think there's two books that he really hates. And that's Genesis and Revelation. He hates Genesis because it tells how everything commenced. He hates Revelation because it tells how everything will conclude. Do you know he's not found in the first two chapters of Genesis? Nor is the devil found in the last two chapters of Revelation. In Genesis, his doom is announced. In Revelation, his doom is accomplished. Genesis says he'll be defeated. Revelation shows how. He is defeated. So Satan wants to keep people from reading the book of Revelation. Tells about how he's cast out of heaven and and how he is defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ. The more we study Revelation, the more we understand why Satan fights so hard against it. So I want to study this book just to irritate the devil. Amen. Amen. It will delight the saints and uh, just aggravate the devil. And I like to aggravate the devil every chance I get, don't you? Revelation is not just the final book of the Bible. It's the fulfillment book of the Bible. It tells us what this world is coming to. People come to me and say, Brother Wes, what's this world coming to? And I say, it's coming to Jesus. Amen. It's coming to Jesus. And we're going to see that as we study this. Tells us what to expect in the future. What will be experienced in the future. Here the future is unveiled, unfolded, and understood. As we go through this, it's going to be like getting in a time machine and going into the future to see what is coming to pass. And it's a very exciting book. Now, somebody said, well, it's a very difficult book to understand. Now, I'm not saying I'm an expert in the book of Revelation. But we are encouraged to read this book and to study this book. God says we'll be blessed if we do so. So let's look at this. If you want to stand with me to honor God's word, we're going to read the first six verses. Of Revelation chapter 1 for our text today. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Look at this. Blessed is he that reads, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia will be introduced to these seven churches in chapters 2 and 3. But he sent this letter to these seven churches. He says, Grace be unto you and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. That's the idea of the sevenfold spirit of God. You read about that in Isaiah 11 verse 2. It mentions seven, seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit there. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To whom him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. What is this world coming to? First of all, 
if you want to take notes, let's note the person that is revealed in the book of Revelations. I think it's important to see that this book is not primarily about beasts and about numbers and about wars and horses and trumpets and plagues. It's all in there. But folks, it's primarily about Jesus. First and foremost, this is an unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. That word revelation is where we get the word apocalypse, which means an unveiling, an uncovering. And it's more than unveiling the future. It is an unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the heart and soul of this book, of the whole Bible, right? It's a revelation of him, and it's a revelation by him. Christ is revealed in many ways in this. Let me give you a little outline of the book of Revelation. In chapters 1 through 3, Christ is the Lord in the midst of his churches. In chapters 4 through 5, he's the Lamb in the midst of the throne. In chapter 6 through 18, he's the Lion in the midst of the nations of this world. Verses, or chapters 19 and 20, he's the lover at his wedding, the bride of Christ. And then chapters 21 and 22, he's the light in the midst of eternal glory. So you're going to see him as the Lord, the lamb, the lion, the lover, and the light of this world. Today, let's think about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in two thoughts here. First, think about the return. Of Jesus Christ. This is talking about Jesus Christ coming back to this earth. He told his disciples in John 14 verses 1 through 3. This was before his crucifixion. He tells them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If that were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, look at this, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So there's a promise. I will come again. Right after he was ascending into heaven, Acts chapter 1, angels appeared and said to the disciples, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. He left, but he's coming back. He's coming back, and I believe very, very soon. We're going to start to see the unfolding of this revelation. Jesus promised us he's coming back. Do you know both the Old Testament and the New Testament are filled with promises of the second coming of Christ. This might amaze you, but there are 1,845 references to the, the second coming of Christ or what will happen after he returns. That's a lot, isn't it? There's 318 references of his second coming in the New Testament. Of the 27 books of the New Testament, 23 speak of the second coming of Christ. The four that don't, there's three one-chapter epistles and the book of Galatians are the only ones that do not refer to the second coming of Christ. So we see he's coming back and he's coming back for us. He's coming back for his people. It's my personal conviction that we're going to get a glimpse of that glorious day in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. There's a voice from heaven saying to John, come up hither. But I think it also speaks of the rapture. The Bible says in, in uh, Revelation or in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. What's he going to shout? Maybe come up hither. Or behold, the bridegroom is coming. So there's going to be a great shout. And folks, I'm not going to take an airplane ride. I'm going to take a plane air ride. I'll wait till y'all write that down. <laughs> Just a plain air ride. So as we look at this, we see Christ coming for his people. 
Then we see him coming with his people. There's two phases to the second coming of Christ, and we're going to talk more about that later. But some, you know, some talk about a one-way ticket to heaven. I got a round, t- round trip ticket. I'm going and I'm coming back. I'm going to meet the Lord in glory. Then I'm coming back with him to establish a millennial kingdom here on earth. Do you have your round trip ticket punched and ready to go? If you don't, I hope you get that done today. Because it's soon to happen. We're going to meet Christ one day very soon. Not only does it talk about the return of Jesus Christ, but it talks about and reveals the reign of Jesus Christ. He's not only going to return to earth, he is coming to reign over the earth. Now this is the second coming. When was the first coming? That's when he came 2,000 years ago, born of a virgin, grew up in Nazareth, was crucified on Golgotha. That's what happened at the first coming. The second coming is going to be a lot different. Think about this. The first time Jesus came, he came to a cradle. The second time, he comes with the clouds. First time, he came to a tree and was nailed to it. The second time, he comes to a throne. First time, he came to a crucifixion. The second time, he comes to a coronation. The first time, he came and died in shame. The next time, he comes, he'll reign in splendor. The first time, he stood before Pilate. The second time, Pilate was standing before him. Amen. First time, he was rejected as a criminal. The next time, he'll be received as the Christ of glory. Folks, one day soon, Jesus will return, and he will reign. The book of Revelation is about the person of Jesus Christ. It begins with this salutation, verse 7, Behold, he cometh. John says, Behold, he cometh. It closes in chapter 22, verse 20, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Is that your prayer? Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Are you ready for him to come? I hope so. Because it could happen at any time. Not only do we notice the person that's revealed here, but think about the prophecy that is recorded in this book. John's going to take us on a tour of the future to see what will come to pass. To bear record, it says, or to testify. What John saw, he testified and wrote it down in this book. Now, the purpose of this book is twofold. It's twofold. It's to unveil the person of Christ, but it's also to unveil these prophecies that will soon come to pass. First, think about the message, the message of these prophecies. It says they're written to the servants of Christ. Now think about this. This is a letter written to the servants of Christ. Now if you're lost, it's not written to you. You say, well, I don't understand it. That's because you're reading somebody else's mail. Amen. Amen. It wasn't written to you. It was written to the servants of Christ. But I tell you what, hey, why don't you get saved today and then you can (laughs) come and the rest of it's going to be to you. Amen. That's a good plan, isn't it? Get saved and begin to understand more about what this is all about. It shows things which must shortly come to pass. You know that word shortly is the word we get tachometer from, Brother Mike. I, I thought that was interesting. Tachometer is an instrument that measures speed of velocity. The word speaks of a fixed position in space, time, or state. See, there's a time set on God's calendar when all this is going to come to pass. Only God knows when that day is going to be. I'm not going to set any dates, by the way. I, I don't want to... You know, you may be disappointed. I'm not going to set any dates for the second coming. I'm just saying it's, it's close. Amen. It's near. I'm not going to set any dates, but we need to be ready every day. Watch and pray, for ye know not when the Lord may come. 
Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. People have tried to set dates for the second coming of Christ, and uh, it just makes people mock what we're doing here. When people do that, it doesn't happen. So we're not going to set dates. But I'm going to show you how we should prepare ourselves for this time to come. The message of these prophecies is that there will come a day when that which is a mystery to us now will be a reality. Folks, listen. Every event we're going to see in this book is going to happen. Amen. It's going to happen. Whether you believe it or not. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. I had one come say, I don't like studying Revelation. It scares me. Well, it shouldn't if you know the Lord. It ought to excite you to know that the coming of Christ is near. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the world today that, that discourage people, but it just tells me, look up, your redemption draws nigh. Amen. Amen. So we're going to see that as we go along with this study. There's a lot of movies about an invasion from outer space. Now, that's science fiction. But Revelation is not science fiction. Hey, there's going to be an invasion from outer space. Christ is coming from heaven. I guess heaven's outer space, isn't it? He's coming. There's a message of these prophecies for us to understand. But secondly, there's the method of these prophecies. It was sent and signified by an angel. If you got your Bible open, if you look at that word signified in verse 1, you could look at it different, signified. Signified. Now I say that because there's a lot of signs and symbols we're going to be looking at. And you say, well, Brother West, why are, there, why are there so many symbols in the Bible? Well, symbols are not weakened by time. They are constant. By the way, half of the symbols we're going to see in Revelation are explained in Revelation itself. The other half are explained in Old Testament books like Ezekiel, Daniel, Zechariah. You see the same symbols there that we see in Revelation. And those symbols don't change. What they meant then, they're going to mean in this book. So knowing the Old Testament is going to help us to understand what these symbols are all about. Numbers has a large part in this. And we look at the symbols of the, the seals being broken, the trumpets sounding, the vials being poured out. We read of beasts and creatures. Then there's these numbers, especially the number seven. And uh, in Bible numerology, seven means what? Completeness, perfection. Well, we're going to talk about seven churches, seven spirits, seven candlesticks, seven stars, seven lamps, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven horns, seven eyes, seven angles, seven crowns. Then there's the number six. That plays an important part in this study. The mark of the beast is what? Six, six, six. Six is the number of man. So all this is going to come out as we study this. And these symbols are going to help us understand. Matter of fact, nearly 300 Old Testament references can be found in the book of Revelation. So that's why we need to study the whole Bible. You're not going to understand the New Testament if you don't understand the Old Testament. We need both. Matter of fact, folks, the best commentary of the Bible is the Bible. It's the best commentary of itself. Then thirdly, think about the promise that is received in this book. The whole Bible is a blessing to read, amen? But Revelation is the only book that guarantees a blessing to those who will read it and listen to it. It begins with a promise to bless the reader and ends with a promise. Chapter 22, verse 7. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy 
of this book. Do you want a blessing? Everybody wants a blessing, right? Well, hang with us. If you stay with us through this study, it's going to take five or six months to get through this. But you stick with us and you will be blessed. That's a promise from God. Faithfully attend and study with us through this wonderful book. Now the blessing is conditional, it says, on two things. First note, it's, it's promised to those that will hear and read the words of this revelation. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. That means more than just reading the words. That means coming to know and understand what this book is all about. It means to, well, it seems to imply a public reading of the book. It was sent to seven churches. And the pastor was to stand before his congregation and read this to them. So there's an idea here of a public reading and teaching of this book, which is what we're going to be doing for the next few months. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm in chapter 18. I'm ahead of you. <laughs> I, I like to prepare my messages ahead of time. But I'm already in chapter 18 uh, in my studies. And the more I study, the more excited I get. See, it's been 15 years since we've gone through Revelation. And some of you come to me and say, Brother West, don't you think it's time that we do it again? And you look at everything that's going on in the world today. Is this not a good time to look at Revelation again? And I agree. It's time to look at this again. And I'm looking for a blessing. I believe our church is going to be blessed by doing so. We're going to get a blessing from this. Actually, I went back in 1994. This is the third time. I, see that when you've been somewhere a long time, <laughs> 33 years, every 10 years I go through the Bible again. But in 94, I preached through the book of Revelation. And I went back and looked. We had 94 editions that year. And our attendance greatly increased. God blessed us for going through Revelation. I say, Lord, do it again. Amen. Lord, do it again. I hope we see a great uh, number of additions to our church and, and a great increase in our attendance these next few months. God's going to bless. So those that hear the words of this prophecy are promised a blessing. But not only that, those that heed, those that heed the words of the revelation. See, it's not enough to learn the meaning. You need to let these truths impact your life. Let it deepen your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not only to hear the words, but also keep those things. They that hear and those that heed these words of prophecy. Keep these things. That means guard them from loss or injury. Folks, don't take lightly what this book is saying. No, I know a lot of people mock the book of Revelation. They mock it, make fun of it. But don't, don't you be one of them. Don't, don't take this lightly, what this book is teaching us. Folks, there are truths here that we need to take and walk by these truths and live by the truths of this book. As I said, some people are frightened by the book of Revelation. They don't want to read it. They don't want to hear sermons about it. It scares them. Well, it may scare the devil out of you, but that would be a blessing too, wouldn't it? <laughs> Amen. Some of you may need the devil scared out of you, out of your life. The Bible says, for the time is at hand. The time's at hand. Now, he's not saying so much that the time is immediate as it is imminent. You know the difference? What is imminent? That means that it could happen any time. This could happen at any time. 
far as I know, there's nothing else that needs to be done in the fulfillment of prophecy before the coming of Christ. I believe he could come any day. Now, I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are looking for the Antichrist. Well, good luck. But he'll be revealed later. And we got a lot to say about the Antichrist in this study. But keep these sayings. Walk in them. Live by them. And understand that this is imminent. The Lord could come at any time. And there's many warnings here. Chapter 22, verse 10. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. These things will surely come to pass. Christ may come before we get through this study. That's okay. We'll just finish it in heaven. Amen. Amen. We might even uh, get John the Revelator to teach it for us. I think he'd probably do a better job, don't you? Maybe we get John the Revelator to have a summer elective, Sister Jackie. And we'll, we'll let him teach us the book of Revelation. Even better yet, let the Lord Jesus teach us. It's about him, isn't it? So it, we may end this study in heaven. That's going to be fine. But if not, I encourage you and exhort you to come. And we're going to be doing Sunday morning and Sunday night. These Sunday morning glories, I'm going to challenge you. Come back on Sunday nights. I don't want you to miss any because it, it's all going to work together. So I want to encourage you, uh, be a Sunday night attender these next few months and get all of these uh, messages. The Bible says, Philippians 4, 5, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. There's a way that we should be living. In these last days. The Bible says 1 Peter 4, 7. Say, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Knowing the day in which we're living. Knowing that the coming of Christ is drawing very near. It should affect the way we live. We should want to be more faithful. We should want to be more godly in how we're living. Let me conclude with this. Uh, somebody said, well, Brother West, what makes you think that we're in the last days? What makes you think that the coming of Christ, you preachers have been saying this for 2,000 years. And that's true. I've been saying it for 33 years. But I know that I'm 33 years closer <laughs> than I was when I started. I haven't changed my mind. I believe the coming of Christ is near. I want to give you six signs why I believe that we are at the end. And we're going to be looking at these closer as we go through this study, but just kind of give you an understanding of where we're coming, what we're, what we're coming from. Six signs why I believe we're in the end time. Number one, Israel is a nation once again. In 1948, Israel became a sovereign state. 1967, they got control of Jerusalem. Both of those are fulfillment of prophecy. Folks, Israel is the key to end time prophecy. The Bible prophesied the dispersion of the Jews into all the world, and it prophesied them coming back to their land of Israel. Many thought that would never happen. I mean, after 1,900 years, a nation is reborn. That doesn't happen often, does it? But it's all the work of God. So the fact that the Jews are back in Israel and have control of Jerusalem, that's one sign. Number two, the enemies of Israel are prophesied for the last days. Especially Ezekiel chapters 37 and 38. Name the nations that will oppose Israel in the last days. Gog and Magog. Most believe Gog is a reference to Russia. Iran is mentioned as Persia, its Old Testament name. The Arab nations in Asia and North Africa. Turkey, some believe is Gomer. 
Now, all these nations that Ezekiel mentions are today the vowed enemies of Israel. And the fact that they're going to attack Israel, we can see it coming, can't we? The war of Gog and Magog could happen at any time when these nations invade Israel. Number three, the revival of the Roman Empire. As you read in the book of Daniel, the old Roman Empire is going to be revived in that area of Europe where the Roman Empire was. Now, what do you see today? The European Union is one of the strongest forces in the world today. And their economy and all that's involved in that. So we can, we can really see that Antichrist coming and taking control of that area and how evident that is to us today. Number four, the rise of the occult and supernatural wonders. Folks, that's paving the way for the Antichrist. Number five, a falling away and apostasy. Departing the faith and the rise of an ecumenical movement to produce a one world religion. That's well on its way. That's what's going on today among many denominations. The Antichrist will get control of that. A one world government, a one world religion. We're going to see that in the book of Revelation. And number six, an increase in earthquakes and natural disasters. Uh, Betty, Betty keeps an eye on these things. Uh, and she tells me, how amazing it is that the number of earthquakes that were seen, the active volcanoes and all these things that uh, we read about in the book of Revelation. These things are increasing in these last days. So that's just six signs that I think show that we are in the last days. The time is at hand. Hey, it's high time to wake up and get ready. And if you believe these things, it's going to affect how you live, how faithful you're going to be. Knowing the Lord could come at any time. You know, many people love prophecy. You can love prophecy and not necessarily love Jesus. You know that? I mean, a lot of people, they're, they're interested in prophecy. Especially end time prophecy. But they're, they're not that interested in the Lord Jesus Christ and serving him. And loving him. For example, think, think about a station master on a railroad. Now he has his charts, he has his schedules, he knows about the, the trains, when they're going to come and go. He's got all this information, he knows a lot about trains. But at that station, here's a young lady awaiting the arrival of the next train. She doesn't know what the station master knows. She doesn't know all the things he knows about trains and schedules. But she's much more excited about the coming of the train than the station master. Why is that? Because her beloved fiance is on that train. She's waiting for him to come. And she's excited. She's anxious to see her beloved. Now, folks, that's what I'm talking about. You might become an expert on the book of Revelation. You might be interested in a prophecy. But do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord as being unveiled in this book? See, which one are you more like? Are you like the station master who just knows a lot about prophecy? Or are you like that young lady who's anxiously awaiting the bridegroom to come? That's who's coming, the bridegroom. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is the bridegroom coming for his bride. There's going to be a great wedding feast in heaven afterward. The bridegroom is coming. Are we looking for him? Are we longing for his coming? Are we living for it and learning more and more about Jesus? Brother Sam, why don't y'all come ahead? We're going to prepare for a hymn of invitation.
Another blessing in reading and heeding the book of Revelation is a reward. The Bible says, for those who love his appearing. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Paul said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, do you love his appearing? Do you love the idea, the thought that Jesus could come today? Now, some people, it's not so much they love his appearing as they love their disappearing. What I mean is some people, the rapture is about the only thing left to get them out of a mess that they're in. They want to be evacuated. Not so much loving the coming of Christ as loving the they're leaving this world. There's no reward for that. But if you love the Lord and love the idea of his coming back, there's a reward for each one. What's this world coming to? It's coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have a blessed time learning what all that means. If you're not saved, as I said, you may not enjoy this at all. But hey, why don't you get saved today? And then you can enjoy this study along with the rest of us. Come to Jesus. Put your faith and trust in Him. You'll be glad you did when Christ comes and takes His people out. You're not left behind. Amen.